Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how to program MATLAB in order to read data from IEEE common data format CDF and get the sparsity pattern plot of Vibus. First of all, let's look at the worldwide power system test case archive. Go to the Google and type power system test case archive. Click here on the first search. These are the power system test case on 14, 30, 57, 118, and 300 bus system. And this is also the IEEE common data format, which is the partial description for the exchange of salt load flow data. Our MATLAB code should be based on this data format in order to be capable of solving power flow problems for different systems like IEEE 14 bus 30, 57, 118 and 300 bus system. If you click on each of these bus, you will again see the IEEE common data format, also the data file related to the bus. To calculate the load flow of all buses, you need to save the data in CDF file of each bus in one folder. I have already saved them in this folder, name it as OSA CDF file. Now let us go to the MATLAB environment to see how to code MATLAB to be capable of reading IEEE common data CDF and get the sparsity pattern plot of Vibus. Since all the buses in common data format include both numeric values and characters, as you can see, the date bus data follows the buses including high voltage and low voltage. Also the brain data follows in line 19 and at the end, there are also some more characters. Therefore, we cannot use them directly. We need to read them line by line. In the first line, a function is implemented to read data from an input file in common data format CDF and getting YPass as an output. If open function is used to open the file name with complete file path and obtain the file identifier and pass the file identifier to the fgetl function to read data. We used a while loop here because a while loop allows the execution of a block of code until a certain condition is met. One of these conditions is a while true loop, which is basically a loop that runs forever until the reading data ends. When if open function open the file successfully, while when or while true loop condition run and passes the file identifier to fgetl function to read one line from the file. It will continue and read all the data line by line until the line string complete and will actually break out the while loop condition entirely. But if if open cannot open the file, then file identifier is minus one or false. In this case, you will get an error. We can also use another method like text scan to read data line by line instead of using while loop. There are actually many methods like here I used iscar t line directly for while loop condition. And it is up to you whatever methods you feel comfortable, you can continue with that. When reading the line string completed and while loop is stop condition, we need to use f close function that closes the file associated with file identifier and it returns zero if successful or minus one if not. 
After finishing with reading the data file, we need to classify each of us data and bring data into different items. To see what these items mean and which of them are generators, loads, admittance, and so on, we need to refer into IEEE common data format. And here you will see all the explanations for each columns. To go through each column, it will take a lot of time. So you should read all of them by yourself for better understanding and it is well explained. As an example, let me explain one of this column. This column 25 to 26, which is type I. I means integer, if floating point, star, mandatory item, and issues the alphanumeric. And here in column 25 to 26, if the integer type is 0, that is unregulated load PQ. One hold MVAR generations within voltage limits PQ. Two hold voltage within VAR limits generator PV. Three hold voltage and angle that is the swing or slack bus must always have one. Let us go back to the data in column 25 to 26. The integer type include 3, 2, 0. 3 stands for swing or slack bus, which is in bus 1. So we can take it as our reference bus. Note that for a network system, there is one reference bus or slack bus. If we open IEEE 30 CDF file, again the integer type 3 is at bus 1. And there is no more number of 3. Similarly, you can check the rest. That there is only one reference or slug bus for each system. We were at line 20. Find bus equal to str find cdf bus data follows. And this function find one string within another. The test may be a string or salary of string. So this will create 49 by 1 empty brackets. Because we have 49 line here in CDF file. So for each of line an empty bracket is created for column 1 to 49 bus number. Then take the size of find buses which is 49 by 1. Here I use for loop for i equal to 1 to count data and inside for loop is empty function is used and it will check as if find bus i1 becomes 0 the function will return logic 1 if find bus i1 is not empty the output will be logical 0 significantly false then put it equal to 0 to get rid of that unnecessary items. Cell to mat function is used here to convert a multi-dimensional cell array of passes into a single ordinary matrix. Similarly, do the same thing for branch data as we did for the bus data. After that, you have just look at IEEE common data format and write your code accordingly. Now let us go directly to YBus matrix. YBus equal to YBus turn left plus YBus turn right plus YBus shunt and so on. Each of them were calculated separately after calculating the necessary data for both passes and branches. To get the sparsity pattern plot of YBus, the branch data is used. Since all the files here from 14 to 300 bus system contains large data, so it is useful to use sparse matrix. In sparse matrix, most of the elements are zero and are different from dense matrices. 
to visualize the sparsity pattern of matrix Y bus, a syntax as spy is used to plot the sparsity pattern plot of matrix Y bus. Now let us call our function to see how it looks like. The name of our function is also underscore pro CDF pad. CDF pad is the input file in common data format like IEEE 14 CDF dot text, IEEE 30 CDF, IEEE 57 CDF, IEEE 118 CDF, and IEEE 300 CDF dot text. Let's write our function here in common window. Asa underscore pro inside quotation mark write the input file. Let's start from IEEE 14 CDF dot text. Click enter. Now you can see how the sparsity pattern plot of YBus for IEEE 14 bus system looks like. And the number of non-zero elements are 54. If you look at to the common window, you will notice the bus numbers start from bus 1 to 14. This column represents the magnitude voltage in per unit. And this one shows the angle in degree. Bus 1, as we explained earlier, represented the slack bus. That magnitude voltage is known and angle is 0. Number of iteration is 5. And this is the data of our Y bus matrix, which is a 14 by 14 matrix. Let us do it for 30 bus system. Just change 14 to 30 and click enter. Yes, this is how the sparsity pattern plot of Y bus for 30 bus system looks like. And the number of non zero elements increased to 112. And it is a 30 by 30 Y bus matrix. Do that for IEEE 57 CDF file. As you can notice, a 57 by 57 matrix is created. And this is also the sparsity pattern plot of Y bus with 213 number of non zero elements. Similarly, call 118 CDF file. A 118 by 118 YBUS matrix is created. This is also the sparsity pattern plot of YBUS with 476 non zero elements. Finally, call IEEE 300 CDA file data. Yes, it actually works for this file as well. As you can notice, when number of bus increases, the number of non-zero elements increases accordingly. A 300 by 300 Y bus matrix is created. You can see the data from here. Now let's have a look at another code, which I use text scan to read data instead of while loop. The name of our function is also pro one. Just add one here. Yes, we got the same plot and the output data as obtained previously. Let us also check for 14 bus system if it works. Yes, it actually work. Repeat it for 30. Again, it actually works. Okay, we have got the same result by running of this to code. I hope you understand the way how to read data in CDF and the sparsity pattern plot of YBUS. I will stop here in the next video. 
I will discuss more about and we will obtain the load flow calculation. So please don't forget to subscribe to get the notification of my next video.